I want to do an experiment where I need to measure really low wind speeds, more of a draft really. But this anemometer really sucks at measuring low wind speeds. Because the display goes up in increments of 0.2 meters per second and that's just too coarse. So I was going to build my own. And I got as far as making this rotor, which is going to go in here. And that rotor picks up the draft from me walking past it just fine. And I was going to detect that it turns using one of those photo interrupter gates, which has a photodiode and a phototransistor. And if I interrupt the uh, light in between, that uh, also cuts down the current. But it turned out that this rotor was actually less sensitive than the rotor in this one. It's just that the display on this one sucks. Because the bearing on this one is just a pin on copper wire, and that has too much friction, even with oil on it. Whereas this one has really tiny ball bearings. Although the rotor on this one was actually a little bit out of balance initially, that white paint on one of the blades isn't just to make it easy to see it turn, it's also to balance it. I kept adding paint until that rotor was balanced. But looking inside my anemometer, I see that there's a uh, disc with holes in it, and there's a uh, LED behind it, infrared, and a phototransistor here to detect that. So it detects the same way as what I was going to do, so why not just use the signal from that? And so I soldered in a wire to the one contact where the signal is and to ground to connect to a Raspberry Pi. And conveniently, this is a 3.3 volts output. I'm pretty sure this thing measures the uh, low speed so coarsely because it just measures the frequency by counting how many pulses there is in a certain window. So imagine uh, if we have a very low pulse frequency or a short window, uh, we could uh, just count the pulses in this window. So we have one or two, depending on how that lines up with the waveform. And sure enough, on this thing, at low speeds, sometimes it'll just bobble back and forth between 0.2 and 0.4 meters per second. Now we could just make that window that we're looking in bigger, but that means it'll take more time to actually count the pulses, which is also not good. So at low frequencies, it's much better to measure the duration of one pulse and invert that to get the frequency. But then if the frequency is higher, you need a lot of precision. And if there's jitter in the signal, it's still inaccurate. So the way I measure my frequency is I wait for a rising edge and then wait for the next rising edge. And if a minimum amount of time has elapsed, I can calculate the frequency by taking the number of pulses divided by delta T. For low frequencies, just one. For a higher frequency, for instance here, it would be three pulses. And I don't run into this sort of, is it three or four pulses in the window? Because essentially, the window adjusts to match the pulses. And of course, if the frequency is higher, it becomes really easy because I've got lots of pulses. So that approach works well for really high and really low frequencies. So here it is hooked up to my Raspberry Pi. And I'm just counting those pulses in Python because Python is still faster than this thing can spin. And I wrote a routine to graph the wind speed and also show it really big on the top of the screen. And the funny thing is, with this hack, I can actually measure the wind speed of this anemometer much better than I can measure it itself. Uh, you can see the display keeps jumping around by large increments of 0.2, whereas this one only jumps around by very small increments. And looking at the graph here too, it's much more consistent than the display on here. And now I'm ready for that experiment, which will be much simpler than the preparations, which is why I made a video about this.